Mr. Harney Bice. Mr. Uh, just that, Mr. Frank Koenig. And Mr. Ker Mr. McLaren. And the organizer, Peace West. And there they are, busy around thinking out plans and ways and means to run a Jubilee committee. Many an hour they spent, heads together, tossing and turning and twisting and changing this and that. We'll get somewhere, says they say. Well, I wonder, did they? It was a big committee, and as I say, many hours were spent. At times, well, things weren't going all right, but we ironed them out, and there's the secretary, Mr. Edgar Schuster, at the head of the table, jotting down his minutes, and he had thousands of minutes to write, believe you me. There's the school committee from whence this pageant really started. That speaks for itself. Blue skies were the order of the day. Beautiful breeze that blew made conditions very favourable for October the 12th. And there you see you can't get along without a good old cup of tea. And there's the stokers busily engaged getting instructions. And they were ably backed up, believe you me. Once that kettle was boiled, there you are. It's good, says Mrs Monk, it's very good. They're the busy band of ladies that came to our assistance and made the Jubilee what it really was. You can see the breezes are blowing. Yes, I don't know, Mrs. Burroughs says, I think I'll have to test that water. I don't know whether it's boiling, says Mrs. Monk. <laughs> no, it's not, says Mrs. Hales. <laughs> well, I won't be beat, says Mrs. Burroughs. <laughs> it is, yes it is, I told you so. One for the road, Mrs. Monk said. <laughs> it looks good brew. And there we have the arrival of some of the first um, of our visitors on Jubilee Day, the 12th. That's committee men, Mr. Les Greats. A great worker was Les, like the rest of the committee. He and his good wife, well, the day's good, says Les, don't you think so? And so on their way. And now we have Mr. Heinrich, one of our good judges, Dr. and Mrs. Bennett, old residents of Freeling, quite happy at being along on such a lovely day. Doctor says, I wish I was back. And there we have the donor, uh, the first 20 pounds that Mr. Nelda donated and started the film. He and his good wife are very, very thrilled. You can see in the background the beautiful uh, hills of Barossa Valley. Marvellous photography there. Oval is decorated and Clary says, I think I'm going to have a good time. Yes, the chairman of the committee, Mr. Rose, says, it looks all right to me. There's Mr. Eric Ander, as you can see, looking very pleased too. <laughs> and there's the chairman of the district council, Mr. Sh Tom Shanahan, and the man with the pipe, well, I think that's Bill Heinrich, all right. <laughs> yes, getting their heads together. There's the secretary, Mr. Edgar Schuster. As happy as a lark, the day was right. And a good time we sure will have. They're waiting now to go into the official luncheon in the pavilion. Mr. Pat Heinrich there. Wouldn't be a show without Pat. And there you can see Freeling Heights for years and years past. And there is one of our old friends, Mr. Knightley, a past school teacher. Eric says, you better come here for safekeeping, I think. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the busy workers preparing the seats for the Continental on the Friday night. You all remember that. Wonderful work was uh, done here by Mr. Bill Ware and his staff of men. They carried on for days and days and erected electric lights. Freeling certainly put on a new coat. And there we have out of the hotel bar. <laughs> yes, he had one for the road too, believe you me. And this is the back to school on the Friday afternoon. <laughs> they were certainly lads in them days. <laughs> well, there's that famous Bill uh, Heinrich again. He got a whistle in his mouth. That's good, says Vic. Looked like Daly's brew. 
Back to school, boys. I think the bell will soon be going. <laughs> that's how they wear. It's not many years ago, is it now? And there you are. You're only as old as you make yourself, you know. <laughs> and here we see the school children back at school, enjoying things there on the Friday afternoon, October the 12th, 1951. It's to be hoped that this film will bring back many memories You notice the colouring, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful photography by Mr. Merv Grant there. Hollywood had nothing on that. Even to the music he recorded. I wonder, <laughs> the old reliable Bill Heinrich. Yes, as Eric Anders, I can remember. <laughs> Just have a look at Eric playing that flute. Oh, and look at Cyril Anders. Oh, what a lad he must have been. Fall in time now. The 12th of October, 1951. Vic Eckerman lost his stick. <laughs> well, they were a great band in those days. <laughs> They're all falling in, going back to school. You see those little looks that they give to the right. I don't know whether they were brought up that way, but looking to the right. Little children. <laughs> He's a big boy now. <clears throat> I would, you certainly could play that flute, Mr. Anders. I wonder who's that in the red jumper. <laughs> Anyone know Arnold Schuster if they saw him? <laughs> Certainly got a good bandmaster there. <laughs> I think he'll have the band the sticks taking away from him somehow. <clears throat> I wouldn't like to say what the tune was. We're still up at the school. You see that the old scholars marching past at the end of the court. They're going around the corner. I don't know where they're going to, though. There we have the little stroller. That looks like Mrs. Eckerman and Pauline. Now there's some happy faces. It's to be hoped that they'll be here for the next Jubilee. Cool drink was the order of the day and there we have the lady sitting down enjoying a lovely spread. I think we know the film has been taken. We don't want to eat today, no matter how tempting. Freeling ladies certainly have a reputation for putting on beautiful spreads. And there's Vic Eckerman on that famous pony of his, leading the bandmaster, I see. And so Friday carries on. A wonderful day, gay entertainment. Mr. and Mrs. Knightley back to enjoy all the fun that we certainly had. And he's quite happy and delighted at being here with us. 
It's good to be back. Yes, I agree. And there is something of historical interest for you. There we have Mr. Schuster, one of the earliest members of the Schuster family and the youngest Schuster child back at school. Truly, that is history. The youngest and the oldest surviving member of the Schuster family back at school. A sweet little child. A proud moment for uh, Mr. Schuster, without a doubt. And as you see, the colouring effect of this film is certainly superb. I don't know, I think that Mr. Wedding strolling through the lines there. All this, ladies and gentlemen, was unrehearsed. The schooling band, the, the freeling uh, band, without a doubt, the school band, been put through their paces by the head teacher, Mr. Simons. They can certainly uh, dress and drill. <laughs> and there we have Martin Ryan, an old of colourful Martin, for those dogs of his. <laughs> and I don't see Martin, I can't see a post in sight. <laughs> and there we have Mr. Bill Seppold, all the way from Seppelfield with this beautiful uh, float. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see these casks of wine, uh, which now appear of interest, the top keg has been sealed away in the uh, cellars of uh, Seppelsfield for the next centenary here in, uh, 90, in the year 2001. That top keg, boys and girls, will then be opened here at Freeling in the year 2001. That is the, one of the first floats, and here we have this lovely float by our local um, garage man, Mr. H. A. Hainish. As you can see, everything was carried out to perfection. We even have Bill Geister depicting the early days of the fire brigade in Freeling. Yes, there's a fire on, says Bill, but where is it? In them days, they also had the pipes. Bill says, I'm going to the fire. I can't find it. And there's a beautiful float, ladies and gentlemen, with all the colouring that's possible. The floats were a credit to the town and district and to those who worked so hard. And here we have a queen of sport. Miss Gwen Dutton and that beautiful swan float. As you can see the colouring effect again. Nothing was missed, nothing was too much trouble to make our centenary celebrations a success. Get out of the road, get out of the road. <laughs> and there we have the Queen of Agriculture, Miss Carmel Maney. The background of the drapings of all the beautiful colours and splendour that was possible. As you see, nothing was missed. Agriculture float was certainly beautiful like were all the other floats, and so were the queens and all their assistants. And here we have Miss Jill Anders, representing Queen of Industry. As you see, the frocking and the queen and the little bridesmaids were all certainly beautiful. Jubilee year. And there's another glorious float to say nothing of the beautiful ladies. And there is the leader of the procession and the organizer peace word on that beautiful Arab steed brought all the way from, from uh, Waruka by Mr. Alf Barrett. The first time the horse had ever been ridden in a procession. Being an Arab, he had all the intelligence and so on goes the show. The start of the procession. There's that beautiful float of, gra of uh, sepals. No need to say who that is. The procession is on its way, wending down the main street of Freeling. 
And there we have again this beautiful float. Float of industry, the float of agriculture with Miss Carmel mining. That was in October 1951. And there we have this beautiful load of hay representing the firm of C.J. Nelner. Many thousands and thousands, I think it was something like 32,000 single flowers was created to make that magnificent float of Linky Noack, the anvil. And so the procession wanders on. Street was gaily decorated. That glorious float Hours were spent by all the assistants at Linky Noack. And still they roll on. The Morn Hill School, a little school with all the heart in the world to produce that float. And on they go, the little native boy there. And here we have one of the real old timers. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Trevor Daly. And Bill Geister still looking for the fire. And then we have Patty Heinrich, Chief of the Emergency Fire Services, coming along on this modern unit, which Freeling is proud of. And they're closely followed by Station Officer Schwert from the Theberton Fire Station, the contingent that he brought up from the Fire Brigade Headquarters. Going along, marching to precision. Behind them came a regiment of the mechanised units from Gawler. As you see, the pageant wandered on, not a dull moment. And here we have one of the early historic scenes. But they didn't have the barrel in them days, I note. And there we have the present day um, foreman of the district council, Mr. Ed Matchos, representing the early days, the early days of the district council in Freeling. Truly, ladies and gentlemen, a remarkable thing. And now we've arrived down at the gates, waiting the, un the unveiling of the Ed Schaefer Memorial Gates, leading uh, to the Oval. Sir Walter Duncan, Mr. Michael MP, Mr. Shanahan, Mr. Koenig and Mr. Shanahan. They've waited for the procession. The gates are being unveiled. The procession has now arrived at the Oval. <coughs> and there we have Trevor Daly again, and I think it's Heine Becker there waving his hat. Long way from here now, Heine. And so the mass bands begin to play the line-up on the arena. And there we have the attendants and the assistants calling them into line. A glorious display that procession made. Now out comes Queen of uh, Agriculture to take up her position. This happened at Freeling, ladies and gentlemen. In your town. And there was the uh, Bureau display, the Freeling branch of the Bureau has a reputation second to none. And there we have three of the judges, Mr. Bert Scholes, Mrs. Bennett, and Mrs. Weckett, all the way from Brinkworth. And here is the official opening of our pageant, ladies and gentlemen, on the Saturday, Mr. Shanahan, uh, Esquire, at the microphone. And he has introduced to Walter Duncan, who officially opens the centenary celebration, congratulates all those who worked for such a worthy cause. In the background there, as you can see, is the committee. Mr. John... Uh, here was it. You can see those beautiful floats still, ladies and gentlemen, and the gaiety that surrounded the Oval at Freeling. Some of our visitors, you mustn't put the grape juice on that car. Mr. Hainish will be after you.
Now our photographer, Mr. Our photographer, Mr. Uh, Graham, has now got the job ahead of him to record the afternoon's show. He still has his eye on Linky Noak's handball. Job to carry that one away, Snow. What a magnificent thing that was. 26,000 single flowers to decorate that float. The children, it wouldn't be a child if he didn't go over those mechanized units. It's to be hoped they won't have to be used in their day. And there we have the start of the children's processions. Champions in the makings too, I guess. They're still running down and Mr. Graham has a job to record them. They're traveling that fast. As you can see, they're really moving here, these boys. And so they come down. There wasn't a dull moment. There was two seconds between each race. And Mr. Simon says, no, you don't. You wait for it. And Mr. Great says, yes. Come back here. Come back here, Bernie. You're off. And there we have out in front there a freeling boy, it looks like. Yes, I think that's Freeling Boy going to the lead there. And while that's running, so are the flat races for the girls and boys. And here's an old buffers race coming down here. You can see something on the outside flashing through. I just can't pick what one up, but they're certainly travelling. That's the boys of the town. And the school children, under the direction of Mr. Simons, the head teacher, put on the glorious display of the Maypole dance. These children and their teachers work for hours and hours, bringing to perfection the rhythms that was necessary. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, all this photography is as yet without a blemish. Truly lovely. Ha ha, this don't look so good. There's somebody down to it, tug of war was the, the order of the day. Teams came from far and wide, and there we have station officer Swerd, he's really doing something here. I mean, he's sitting on that rope, <laughs> and he's taking the strain, and so the tug of war goes on. There was heaving, and John Karen says, you can do it, give me another ounce, Jack. Come on, Curly, come on, Curly. <laughs> Come on, Curly, says John. You can do it. Stick to it, Curly. Stick to it, Curly. Yes. Watch that rope on the centre line, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't miss a trick. You'll see it going back and forth, back and forth. Only a fraction of an inch. And there we have the officers concerned, the City of Adelaide Squadron, the Fighter Squadron. And the wing commander, Reckner, the inspection now takes place by Mr. Shanahan, the JP Esquire, Chairman of the District Council, on the Freeling Able for the first time, inspection of the Royal Australian Air Force took place. We are indeed debtored indebted to Wing Commander Reckner for granting us permission and the privilege of having the ATCs and the three mighty Mustangs which you will see shortly. And now ladies and gentlemen I ask you to look coming in from the Daviston Hills 350 miles an hour they travelled and yet Mr. Gramp was able to successfully record their flights. And in they come again, and now notes their farewell. In the distance he had the, had the uh, cloud effect to contend with, and there you see the roll and the goodbye to Freeling. We hope you've enjoyed us.
And so the mighty Mustangs flew and they flew low within a hundred feet of the oval. And still from the Daviston Hills they come in single file saying farewell. That ladies and gentlemen certainly calls for applause and there goes the little doves released by the Homing Pigeon Club of Freeling. And swinging along we have the ATCs. The Airmen of Tomorrow. There was something like 150 of these boys that came along and gave of their best to make this show what it was. And there we have Station Officer Schwert about to uh, tell us all about the the program that the fire brigade was going to put on. And here is two of the uh, the local champions at the uh, stadium in Adelaide. Um, in my, in the, the boy in the blue pants is certainly landing a few heavy ones. But you can't do that, he said. And so the show goes on. The fire brigade certainly put on a marvellous display that afternoon. And believe you me, if you think that's all uh, give and take, well, believe me, it's not. These boys don't play around, and there's no love lost. They came there to give us entertainment, and believe you me, they gave it. That's enough. And there we have members of the committee getting together and saying, well, now I wonder what's that. And there we have that tall gentleman in the uniform of the Royal Australian Air Force's Wing Commander Reckner who today is convalescing from a serious operation. We wish him well. He's there to saying to Mr. Shanahan, yes, you can do it. Now watch those muscles, ladies and gentlemen. Just watch. And here is the most marvelous feat. If you watch those muscles there in that man's back, surprising what the human body can really stand. A man with the hands on the hips, he's ready to catch the bar in case anything happens. Something like 350 pounds on that bar, a solid steel bar. Just watch how it's bending. I didn't see that, did you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I ask you. There was plenty of fun and gaiety, believe you me. There's another demonstration by members of the fire brigade on the Freeling Oval, that is on the pitch, walking through flames in the asbestos suit. And it was really hot. Some of the Solomon straw was there. That was unprocessed, of course. Right through the flames. It's not a ghost, inside is a real man. And here we have the mechanized units of the military from Gawler giving their display <coughs> on the Freeling Oval. Never before had this been done in our town. We had all the assistance from the services to make our centenary celebrations the success that it really was. And here we have these huge machines and there you have the world's champion in George Schwert tossing, a chief tossing, and he's followed by Clyde Keyes of Rollins Flat, only a lad of 20, a champion in the making, and there's the world's champion again, he and his brother John hold that record at 53 feet, and George is swinging, and so it goes onwards and upwards. Good luck, George. And Clyde follows him, and as I say, Clyde is a champion in the makings, and we wish him well in that sport. 
And there's the one and only uh, feeling chief toss of Vic Eckerman, and Vic never took the coat off. And so that tug of war, it's been going for the last three hours. They're still straining, but not the same team, of course. And they're really getting down to business now. There's keen competition here. And so they swayed backwards and forwards, and they're urged on by young and old, and even the young are saying, I wonder will I and just have a look at that anchor man. Just about want a team of bullocks to shift him. And there we have a, a policeman in the back and he says, in times like this you must pull your sucks up, boys. Looks like some of the thrilling barley grass there. That's Constable Doug Simons from Angerston. Yes, he's still pulling his socks up. Come on, boys. And there we have those glorious airmen. Pilot officer or Flight Lieutenant uh, Ola Renshaw, who won a decoration in Korea and overseas. These boys come along and flying officer Barkell, grand boys that flew overseas. And there's this old buffers race. Martin Ryan's red jumper is still shining up there, if you noticed. He can still run. And there we have a little gathering, station officer Swert and his wife. Come up from Adelaide. They're all having a grand time exchanging ideas and views of what's what. So the committee are still uh, John Cairn in the background and Les Gratz on that committee and the sports committee. And now we have some rural scenes. We are now at the home of Mr. Uh, Hornhard of Alfred Stunt, a breeder who has achieved fame throughout Australasia for his pigs. Those ribbons have all been achieved in the last four years. You're doing a grand job, Fred. Stick to it. This year he took championship honours in Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide and practically all the local uh, country uh, town. Records speak, ladies and gentlemen, and there you see the champion uh, ribbons. This district is noted for good stock and Balfred Stud has the idea of going in only for the best. Note that photography, ladies and gentlemen. And there you have the piggery that has achieved so much fame. Fred says, uh, I look after him the same as I do myself. The pig on this end, the father pig as he was, he's taken 34 grand championship prizes in all states. And now we're at the home of Mr. Tom Shanahan, he and his brother Pat, the council was approached and so a donation was made by the chairman of the district council of 25 pounds towards the cost of the film. And he said if only that organiser had come along I'd tell him that he could have it and uh, so we could get on with the film. <coughs> you will Mr Shanahan, well on behalf of the committee I'd like to say thank you very very much. This seals the film and I hope one day we'll show it in Freeling. That was in October the early part. Goodbye Pat and good luck. I do shake left hand sometimes. And there we have the beautiful um, rural scene there. We have Mr. Bert Shanahan, a great believer in good stock also, rounding up a, a flock of sheep. Shanahan brothers are noted for their um, fat lambs. It's not uncommon to see that they practically weekly top the market for their fat lambs. Bert is on a good charger. Thanks for your assistance, Bert. You go to make the film a success, old man. I hope the sheep keep on uh, getting fatter every year. Good luck, Bert. And the photographer runs along and he goes to the homestead of Mr. Tom Shanahan, uh, Jr. at Templars with his father and the family gathering there. Mr. Shanahan, Tom Shanahan Sr. had uh, six sons. They all uh, congregated together in an endeavor to get the rural shots and make it a success. Mick was unavoidably uh, absent that day and left the five sons. Certainly a lovely family group.
who said you had to go to Hollywood to get good shots. And so we move away, and Mr. Shanahan Sr. is uh, there with his five boys. Mick is not there. All these boys are married, you know, but Dick's not. But uh, notwithstanding that, as you see, goodbye, Dad, good luck. And the five boys, there's John, saying goodbye to his father. Bert likewise, and Dick too. And Tom says, well, I'd better say goodbye, Dad. I suppose you're going home. Goodbye, Grandpa. And there's Grandpa with his only, uh, his only grandson, boys, his only grandson. And we come along now to the home of the secretary, Mr. Uh, Edgar Schuster. On this farm, ladies and gentlemen, five generations are now operating this farm. There we have one of the most modern bailers that came to this district. The recognised force on a farm today is really remarkable. As you will see there, Mr. Ed Schuster Sr., Edgar the secretary, hard at work. Done his job on the uh, secretary and treasurer of the film and home now hard at work. Conserving fodder, because who knows, next year we may not have the feed that we have today. A very wise plan, Edgar. His son Merv is there too. They're busily engaged with this modern machine, and as I say, one of the first in the district. Mr. Edgar Schuster, uh, senior. Edgar's there looking over that uh, machine. These bales are tied with wire, and he periodically checks to see that everything is quite in order. It was on this farm, ladies and gentlemen, that back in 1860, Mr. George Schuster established his farm. And we are out now at home with Grandpa, Mrs. Schuster, and a charming family. Certainly a lovely picture. I know you'll all agree with me on that. And so it is, ladies and gentlemen, that this film, and there we have the home, the original home of Mr. George Schuster, that he built way back, as I say, in 1860. That was the first home I'm given to understand that was built by the Schuster family in Freeling. And now we're at home with the organiser at the police station, and there's little Peter John. He's only taken a few steps. He's there with his family and his sister, and his wife and daughter, and Pat and George, and three little cousins from Renmark, and his sister Kath. Little Peter says, come on, come for a walk, Peter. And Peter says, I don't like Mr. Gramp. I don't like that camera. No, I don't think I will walk. Come on, George says. Get up, Peter. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, George. You see what you'd done? You made him cry. Well, they were his first few steps, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder, will he see 50 years hence? And now we're at the, um, the office of E. A. Anders and Sons. The staff, Mr. Eric Anders in the background, Mr. Hales, Mr. Quinn, Mr. Rowe, and um, Mr. Reynolds, and the ladies, well, you all know those ladies, and the young girls, and they're doing a good job building up an industry in the town of Freeling. Modern offices have been erected, and business in practically every state of the Commonwealth. And so we run on to the firm of Linky Nowak, the man with the tongs, well, you know him. And he's offsider there, Roy Hankey, Mr. Gottwell, and the staff in general, they've lined up. And Bill Heinrich, you saw him earlier, he's better, uh, I know he'd feel that's better if he had a set of bowls in his hands there. And we have the secretary, Mr. Doug Crowsey, in the foreground, as you can see, we must always have a secretary in these big offices. Unavoidably, Mr. Ware was not present that day. And so we run along to uh, Mr. Nelner's chaff industry, and as you see, you've got three good uh, toilers there. We have the one and only 
Mr Geister about and he wastes no trouble, up and over it goes. And there we have Mr Harry Don't. I'll show you, Bill. That's how it's done, Mr Gatner, he said, just like that. And Fred Bachman, oh, cunning old Fred. <laughs> just over the top. And Mr Heinrich, the secretary and accountant, and he's ably assisted at the, the, the uh, firm of Mr Nelner by Mrs Dolez. That's a very nice picture, Paddy. And there we have the district clerk, Mr Hazy, on the left. This is a scene at the post office. Mr Lancaster, another charming young person. Looks somewhat like Miss Jen Don't. And the one and only Jim Wortley. How are you, Jim? And so they collect around the post office, all busily engaged. Oh, did somebody say it was going to rain? Hurdles chasing those dewdrops. Well, that's Freeling Post Office. Yes, here we are. We're building a home. This is the home in the making then of the chairman, Mr. Rowe. There's Alan Linky. And a few of the workmen there, Colin Mullins, they're all busily engaged, working. They wanted to get this home finished early in the piece so that the um, chairman of the Jubilee Committee could get into residence. And now we're out at the home of Mr Vic Eckerman. Mr Eckerman believed in good stud stock. And as you can see, he's got them there. Beautiful cows, rich pastures, and Vic says it pays to keep the best. Outside those rails is the photographer. You don't blame him, I know. And he said, I'm going to stop out here, Vic. You turn him around, please. A beautiful beast. And Vic says, I've had it for the day. Come on now, I think we'll have a drink. In the garden of his home with his wife and his family, Vic enjoys a nice, cool drink. And by the look of that flag in there, I think it would be Gramps Orlando. Good luck. Even Pauline says, I think it's good. And Pauline had her lemonade and so did Richard. Nice, Vic. We're going to have tea in the cool of the summer garden. And now thoroughbreds there, ladies and gentlemen. Vic also has some nice stock paddock out there in his place. Who knows, champions in the making. And we run along to the vice president, Mr Ed Schaefer, who has built Freeling Garage with modern premises. His son, Mr John Schaefer, and his son drives this modern tractor out. Mr. Schaefer was Vice President of the Jubilee Committee and did sterling work in organising, particularly with Queen of Industry. These are the modern premises that he has recently completed. And as Mr. Jack Schaefer, his son, says, there's no doubt about it, you must be prepared for the summer fires. You better put on effective silences. That's right, isn't it, John? This was an inside shot. Marvellous photography again, ladies and gentlemen. And so we run along to a very energetic committee, namely the Freeling Hospital. That's the home of Mr Schaefer. I was one step ahead then. The Freeling Hospital now looms up. <coughs> a building recently purchased by the hospital board. It is here that you get all the care and attention that is possible. Folks say, I wish I could go back to hospital again with nurses like that. And a sister, well, she's really a sister by name and a sister by nature. And so we uh, pass the hospital and come to that lovely home of Mr Nelner, where we see he, his good wife and his two sons Richard was playing tennis somewhere and wasn't there. But a lovely home and a lovely spacious garden. 
proud could any man be to build himself a home and have happiness and contentment adding beauty to freeling and we move along to the next home of uh, Mr. Karen, Mr. John Karen, and his beautiful uh, baby. His wife is equally as charming and John says yes I think um, I'd better go to work but there it is I better uh, say goodbye to my babe first and John says well it's Sunday today perhaps we better go to church and there's another lovely home and feeling but you can't get away from the bowling green and there we have busy workers preparing for the season 1952-53 they're hacking away look out son and we pass along and we never forget those who died for the freedom of this country in the 1914-18 war reverence in our own small town never forgetting the brave and glorious dead erected in memory of those who gave their lives for king and country in the 1939-45 war the president Mr. Rowe blue skies were the order of the day but Freeling never forgot that they owed something to those who gave their very life and then on Sunday following the, the uh, Jubilee celebrations the various denominations did not forget that they owed to the Creator thanksgiving for present and past blessings during the last 50 years and services were held on the following morning and on Sundays immediately following to give honor and praise to the Creator for that which we fight and strive for today peace and goodwill and the various churches solemnly went to their church and gave homage to God this is symbolical of the people of our town and district practically every church was represented on our Jubilee film and it was unfortunate that probably some were not able to fit in the service on that particular day but even if they did not or were not recorded on this film they still went back to, to church and paid homage to him and there you see that glorious setting of one of the churches in Freeling photography that any studio would be proud to present to any audience again ladies and gentlemen you see the reverence that has been displayed in our little quiet town of Freeling on the fringe of beautiful Barossa Valley and Sunday runs along and it is not necessary for me to mention names you can see by the photography there come this way mother please says Charlie <laughs> Our photographer never missed a trick and there we have a little Sunday school group after having their service or their instructions yes this way by Mr. Schuster they on their way and so our photographer did likewise he went to the next where the service was being held 
this time at the Institute. Sunday, the 13th of October, 1951, was dedicated to Remembrance Day. Each and every denomination did not forget, after the gaiety that they had, to go and thank him for all the blessings that we each and all have had and look forward to have in the future. And as usual, you know, you will have that little chat after church. Little Peter's getting a rough passage again. The ministers all cooperated with us in our back to church services. And our film runs on and you can never get away from the boys of the town. The lads of the town here just note the colours of their jumpers, ladies and gentlemen. And that one at the rear there, Alan, I am so bashful. And here's another church scene just over the way. After the service, we all lined up 